John Gordon's best-selling books and talks have inspired readers and audiences around the world. I get involved in a dot-com during that time, a technology startup. I think I'm going to make my, my fortune. I have like 100,000 shares and we collapse. The company crumbles. His principles have been put to the test by numerous Fortune 500 companies, professional and college sports teams, school districts, hospitals and nonprofits. I had a woman come see me speak and she said that uh, I would never make it. She told a friend that I should just give up <laughs> and quit. John is the author of 26 books, including 12 best sellers. Getting on the Today Show was a, was a big boost for me, but then everything dried up. So here I am thinking my career is going to take off and then everything dries up. John and his tips have been featured on the Today Show, CNN, CNBC, The Golf Channel, Fox and Friends, and in numerous magazines and newspapers. You hung on whilst everyone else was telling you to let go, perhaps? Grit. Grit yes. is a huge part of it. Grit is the number one predictor and factor of success. It is grit. What is grit? Here's my formula. So, John, you have reached a very high level of success in your life, as I can see. And with 12 best-selling books, an incredible achievement alone, uh, one of the world's top speakers, huge following on all your social media platforms. You've achieved so much. And I'm curious as to what has been the catalyst for you in your life in terms of making the shift or going down this route of success in your own life. If you reflect back on the journey, has there been a pivotal moment there where it all began to shift for you? You know, as you were just saying that, I was thinking about when I was younger, I was thinking about my life in my 20s and my 30s, trying to find my way. You're not having confidence, not knowing if I was going to be successful. The fear of wanting to make it, but wondering what if I don't make it? And that fear at times was, was paralyzing. I had so much anxiety, so much stress, so much uncertainty, so much concern for the future. And I really didn't fully enjoy life. It was like being a former division one athlete where here I was playing the top of my sport at Cornell university, one of the top programs in the country and not truly enjoying it. When I look back, I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to be great. And if I made a mistake, if I messed up, I was so upset at myself. I felt like such a failure. Like I didn't live up to my expectations. And also when I was playing, I was worried about failing because my identity was tied into my performance. And so when I think back, a lot of it changed when here I'm in my twenties and I'm a mover and I'm sh a shaker and I moved to Atlanta and I opened up a bar in Buckhead, which was a really happening spot. I started a nonprofit organization. We're raising money and volunteering for youth focused charities. Things are awesome. I'm meeting all these people. I meet my wife. We have our kids. I run for city council. I lose the election. I go to law school. I quit after a year and a half. Like This is not for me, but the restaurant business is going well. I put some investors together. I introduce people. I get involved in a dot-com during that time, a technology startup. I think I'm going to make my, my fortune. I have like 100,000 shares and we collapse. The company crumbles. You know, so many dot-coms failed. I was one of the last to get fired, but I remember getting fired that day. And I was like 30, 31 years old. And I literally was so upset, so scared that I thought my, my life was over. Like, how am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to provide for my family? I have these two little kids. But the pivotal moment came when I was so negative to my wife and blaming her for why my life was not turning out the way I wanted to. Blaming, blaming, blaming. Not owning, but blaming. And in that moment, when she threatened to leave me, I knew I needed to change. And that began this journey of working to become a more positive person. And I remember saying like, what am I born to do? Why am I here? And writing and speaking came to me. Okay, I can't write and speak right away. I have to make money first. I decided to get back into the restaurant business. Second mortgage our home, $20,000 in credit cards and a lot of prayer. 
and a lot of faith as we were opening up this place. Because if it doesn't go well, like we're done. Like we are completely done, bankrupt, done, lose our house, lose everything. And that was when, in many ways, my faith was born because I had no faith. I At the time, I mean, I, I had to have faith. You don't know God is all you need until God is all you got. <laughs> and I was in the pit. And they say, there are no atheists in foxholes. Well, there are no atheists when you are literally about to lose everything that you have. And so that was a really pivotal moment for me in my life of knowing, okay, I've got to make this work. And I said, I will never forget when I lost my job, I said, I will never work for someone again. I will never put my life and my family's future in the hands of someone else. Somehow, some way, I've got to find a way to make this work. And that began this journey of opening the restaurant, researching positivity, positive psychology. This was during the emerging field of positive psychology. Now we're in 2001, 2002. And I'm, I'm learning about this. I'm, I'm writing about it. I start these tips on ways I could be more positive. I'm sharing with others. And people are starting to read my stuff. And, and that's how this journey began. Before they were a podcast, before there were blogs, before there were any of this, I started a newsletter, a weekly positive tip. And I was sending that newsletter out. Five subscribers at the time, my mother, my brother, best friend from college. You know, now I have like 400,000 subscribers to my, to my weekly, you know, positive tip. But at the time it was five. And it was just about doing the work, sharing the message, wanting to make a difference, wanting to be more positive myself. Didn't have all the plans, didn't have all the answers, but I knew I had a vision and a mission to encourage and inspire as many people as possible, one person at a time. You see, I was so focused on myself that once I started to focus on others, in many ways, it like took the pressure off me. It was no longer about me being successful. How can I help others? How can I make a difference in the lives of others? I was miserable, miserable being a narcissist. I was miserable focusing on myself. I was miserable not living mission and purpose. But once I had a mission and purpose, once I focused on making a difference and serving others, everything changed. So that was a huge pivotal moment for me and my life in so many ways. And it's why I do what I do today. It's who I am today. It's why I've written out 26 books and 13 bestsellers. We've added one more. And you know, this journey has been, been incredible. And when you introduced me, I'm like, wow, I had a moment of a quick reflection as you were saying that, because I never really think of myself as successful. I think of myself as, as that young guy still getting going. It's so funny because when I got going, I was a young guy and I started working with sports teams and all the coaches rolled with me. Now I'm going to work with these, with these sports teams, college and pros, and most of the people are younger than me. And, and that's an interesting shift because I still feel like I'm that young guy who is just getting going. I don't feel like the old guy who's been doing this work for, for this amount of time. Yeah, you've got uh, loads more to give, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, I can resonate with your story there as well. Like the, my journey began with a redundancy, which later became another job and I got fired from that. So it took a redundancy and being fired from a, a position shortly afterwards to make this shift in my life as well. And that was one of my daughter was was only a few months old so i can i can resonate with being in the pit and with losing it all and and the fear and the anxiety that comes with that as well and throughout your journey were there moments of doubt and hesitation and anxiety in terms of hang on is this really the the road i need to be on right now or should i go back to the should i go back to working with somebody else or should i go back to the nine to five or should i go back to something a bit more secure. And how did you navigate those difficulties as they arose? Of, of that, you know, writing and speaking, beginning that process, not getting good feedback early on. I had a woman come see me speak and she said that uh, I would never make it. She told a friend that I should just give up <laughs> and quit. And she wanted me to get coaching from a woman in town who was a speaker. And it's so funny because now that woman, you know, like will ask me for advice. So it's pretty interesting, the, the speaker. And, you know, I don't, I don't glow at that. I just think it's so funny how, how it all works. And I wasn't a very good speaker early on. So there were times I wanted to give up, times the talks didn't go well. And then, you know, writing initially and, and getting on the Today Show was a, was a big boost for me. But then everything dried up. 
So here I am thinking my career is going to take off and then everything dries up. So what do I do? Then I sell the restaurants. I eventually opened up four of them. So I sell them and I'm like, I'm going to focus on writing and speaking. My wife did not want to sell because we were now comfortable with the restaurants doing well. We had worked so hard to get to a place where we were now doing well and she didn't want to sell, but I'm like, no, I have to sell. Like I have to focus on this 100% because I was getting these signs that it was time to sell and I have to do this. I always see signs and, and obey the signs and follow them. And they've guided me in my life like in amazing ways. So I follow the signs. If you want to read the seed, I talk about signs in the seed, which is a great journey of a guy, 27, going on a journey to find his purpose, very much like my own journey. So I sell and now it's just me and this business of writing and speaking. And all of a sudden, everything dries up. Like I was on the Today Show, everything dries up. So I had moments of doubt. Should I should I get a job? The money's running out of the account right now. How long will this last? Maybe I should do something else. And it was on this walk where I was having all these doubts where the idea for the energy bus came to me. And here I am walking and praying, fearful praying, not like hopeful praying, but fearful praying. And the energy bus, boom, just comes. The idea. And I went back, I started writing this book. And I wrote in three and a half weeks of pure inspiration. And it gets rejected by 30 publishers. So now I have more doubts, you know, more fear. Is this going to happen? Like, like, I have this dream. I have this book that I think can make a difference. And I'm being told, no, it's not good enough. We don't believe in it. Your future is not going to happen. Your dream is, is not going to be realized. And so there were many moments of doubt and fear and uncertainty. And I look back on that. I was like, wow, I sat in that uncertainty and in that fear, but just kept hoping, kept believing. That's why I'm such a big believer in positivity and optimism because I experienced it firsthand. And I'm not naturally positive. I'm like a pessimistic optimist. I go negative and then I have to go positive. Then I find the eternal hope. And so, yes, many moments of doubt. And I'll never forget John Wally and Sons agreeing to publish this book and saying, okay, let's, 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 let's do this. Let's get it out there. I was so excited and comes out bookstores wouldn't carry it more fear, more doubt. All right, maybe this isn't going to work. And then took five years for, for it to be a bestseller. But after a few years of getting out there and starting to come back from that and all these things, all these things started happening. Sometimes you're waiting on God, but God's waiting on you to get out there and do the work. I had to go do the work. I had to go, you know, put myself out there. And I can trace back a lot of things to that one tour that wasn't successful, but yet planted seeds and led to engagements here, engagements there, engagements there. And here we are years later. And I think I did like a hundred engagements, you know, this year I spoke to NFL teams, college teams, NBA teams, the top companies in the world, amazing school districts, you name it. I've been busier than ever this year. Uh, books have sold more than ever this year. And so here we are years later and I get to do this work. I have the gift and the joy and the purpose of doing this work. And so, yeah, a lot of doubt, a lot of fear. But on the other side of that, on the other side of that, that is the success that you want, the dream that you want to have. And I truly believe not everyone could achieve my dream, but I believe everyone could achieve their dream. Mm -hmm. you, you hung on whilst everyone else was telling you to let go, perhaps? Grit. Grit yes. is a huge part of it. Grit is the number one predictor and factor of success. It is grit. What is grit? Here's my formula. It is inspired by vision and purpose. Where do you want to go? And why do you want to go there? You need a vision and you need purpose. Because along the way, there'll be times you want to give up. Obstacles will come your way. You have to have that vision and purpose, which are greater than your challenges and are greater than your obstacles. Vision and purpose. It is fueled by optimism and belief. Got to have that belief. Got to have that optimism that tomorrow's going to be better than today. That somehow, some way, you're going to find a way. Positive leaders, positive teams, find a way forward. Belief is essential. It is powered by faith and hope. Faith and hope. Perspective. How we see the world determines the world that we see. And what do fear and faith have in common? They both believe in a future that hasn't happened yet. So fear believes in a negative future. Faith believes in a positive future. If neither has happened yet, why wouldn't we choose to believe in the positive future? We have faith and hope. When we're going through that challenge, is it an opportunity or a challenge? I see the opportunity. I see what we can learn from this. How can we grow from this? How can we get better because of this? 
if you have optimism and you have belief and you have faith and you have hope, you keep going. You don't give up. People say hope is not a strategy. Well, yes, it is. It's a great strategy because you have to hope to take one more step towards tomorrow. So you have to take that step. Now you have to take action, but hope inspires you to take action. So it's powered by faith and hope, driven by love. If you don't love it, you'll never be great at it. So if your listeners are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, what do you truly love to do? What do you want to be great at? Great at. What will you do on a daily basis each day that, that even though it's hard, you will still love doing it, you will still love working at it, and you truly want to build something? I just had Tom Patterson on my podcast, and Tom Patterson is the founder of Tommy John. Tommy John Underwear, Tommy John Clothing, like built the business from nothing, like nothing, from a prototype, just like Kevin Plank and Under Armour. And from the very beginning, just had this, this belief and this love that this is what he was doing and didn't want to do anything else and did it nonstop all the time. It was his passion. It was his drive. It was everything. And that love drives you to be great. So love is what drives grit. We often think of love as like this weak energy. No, love is what drives grit. You love your family, you're not going to quit on them. You love your team, you're not going to quit on them. You love what you do, you're going to keep working on it to master your craft. So, so love is the ultimate driver of grit. And then it's revived by resilience, kept alive by stubbornness. Stubbornness is a good trade for grit. Resilience is essential. And if we're honest, includes a little fear of failure. You got to have that little fear. The big fear paralyzes. The little fear says, what happens if I don't make it? What happens if I don't do this? So you work a little harder. You give a little more because that little fear. And if we're honest, includes a little fear of failure and desire to prove oneself. So there is that desire to prove oneself. The great ones all still want to prove themselves. Tom Brady still wants to prove himself. LeBron James still wants to prove himself. I'm sure you take me to Ireland and we see the greatest rugby players, right? They still want to prove themselves. So you still want to prove yourself. And to this day, I come on your podcast. I want to make a difference. I'm driven by that vision and purpose. I want to make an impact. But at the same time, there's still a part of me that says, I want to do a great job. I, I want to make a difference. I want to impact people. I don't want to, I, I don't want, I don't want to crap in the bed, right? You know, I, I want to show up and, and, and make an impact. This might be the first time someone is hearing me, right? They've never heard me before. They're hearing me for the first time. And I've got to bring great energy, great ideas, and something that will benefit them. Otherwise, I'm wasting their time. So I think there's a level of, of, of care and desire to prove oneself that drives you. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, though, men will only make a change when they've lost everything, when they've reached the bottom of the pet, don't they? Sometimes. I mean, too often we wait till we hit the bottom. Yeah. But we really don't even know what rock bottom is a lot of times because we think it's the bottom, but it could get worse. So we get hit and it's in those moments when the pain is so great, it causes us to change. You're right. Too often we wait. But for me, like when my wife gave me that ultimatum, there was a willingness to change. And I always say, you got to be willing. You got to be willing to look in the mirror and say, can I do better? Can I be a better man? Can I be a better husband? Can I be better at work? Can I be better in my career? Can I give more? Am I doing all that I can do? And so often we're not. So you got to be honest with yourself. And if you can do more, then give more. If you want to be more, then do more. And so it's really about not waiting for the difficult moments, but decide to be your best today, right? That's why I write the books I write. I want to inspire people where they are to get better right now, to not wait, to pursue excellence. I wrote training camp, which is what the best do better than anyone else. This is my shirt, training camp, right? So it's it's inspired by an undrafted rookie trying to make it in the NFL and he gets injured, meets a special coach who takes him under his wing and teaches him the winning habits that separate the best from the rest. It's about excellence, pursuing excellence. Like, why do we wait for pain? No, pursue excellence. Pursue being your best. Pursue all that you're meant to be and don't settle for average. But you got to win the battle of the mind to do that. That's why I share 20 ways to be mentally tough in that book. You have to win the battle of the mind. I think so often men, we're losing the battle because we're losing the battle of our mind. And that's where we're struggling the most right now. And so what, what I'm feeling called to do and what I'm more passionate than ever is, and that's why I agreed to do this podcast, is to speak to men, to remind them of who they are, to remind them of their power and their strength. And don't wait 
for your life to implode or to be destroyed before you decide to put it back together. Yeah. So why are so many men struggling in today's world, do you think? Is there a lack of self-belief? Is there too much comfort? Is there uh, just there's an unwillingness there to make that move because of the fear of failing? I think in many ways, men are being attacked and bombarded in society, and they're being attacked in the place of their identity. See, you will always be attacked in the place of your identity when you're striving to be great and striving to be your best. It's like you're performing or you're working and you'll be attacked like, oh, you're not man enough. You didn't make, an, you don't make enough money. You're not successful enough. With women, are you good in bed? You know, if you really want to be honest, like there's that identity, like, oh, maybe I'm, I'm not a great sexual partner. There's that fear of that. So there's all these fears that we're not man enough and we're attacking the place of our identity based on what we do, based on our performance, based on our income level, based on our status. And so we'll always be attacked in the place of our identity. Now, this is not an evolutionary trait. You gotta understand, people will often say we're negative because we have this survival mechanism where we're racing and running from tigers. And so it's taught us to be negative for survival. Identity has nothing to do with survival. Identity is purely spiritual. And at the deep spiritual level, there is an evil that's always trying to separate you and keep you from your destiny. And that is truth. I wrote a book, The Garden, on this. That is truth. There is an evil, and look in the world and you'll see evil. And it's what is Harry Potter about? Good versus what? Evil. What is Black Panther about? Good versus evil. evil. Superman, good versus evil. Evil. Every major epic story, Star Wars, good versus evil. Every major story is about the hero having to battle eagle, evil to overcome, to be who they're meant to be in order to save others and save the world. Well, why is that? Because that's the story within our universe. That's what resonates in our soul. So once you understand it's a battle of good versus evil, guess what? There is evil trying to separate you from yourself, trying to separate you from others, isolation trying to separate you spiritually from the creator of the universe, from God, and then attack you in your identity uh, that, oh, you're not special. You're not here to do great things. You're not here to be someone of value. You're not here to make a difference. You are weak. And all these voices come in that say, you're weak. You're not enough. You're not strong enough. You're not powerful enough. You're not successful enough. And they attack you in the place of your identity. I challenge every man who's struggling right now, to be honest and say, is this true? Is this your reality? I guarantee you'd say, yes. I talked to many men, private conversations where this is the reality. They're being attacked in the place of their identity. They just didn't know what was happening. They didn't know where it was coming from. So they think it's their own mind. We're taught our negative thoughts come from us. But when I speak to professional athletes or, or, or college athletes, I always ask them this question. Do your negative thoughts come from you? And they're like, yeah, of course they're in my head. But here's the next question. If you believe your negative thoughts come from you, who would ever choose to have a negative thought? Would you ever choose a negative thought? Would you ever choose a thought that says you're not enough? You're not going to make it? Would you ever choose a thought that sabotaged you? Of course you wouldn't. You are not choosing your thoughts. They're coming in. They come from a spiritual place. I've talked to neuroscientists. No one has ever found a thought inside of their brain. Thoughts come from consciousness. When you're dreaming, having a nightmare, are you choosing those thoughts? No. They're always coming in. So negative thoughts come in from consciousness, the internet cloud of consciousness. The brain is the hardware. It's where activation happens. I'm not sure how it all works, but I have an understanding, a very good download of how it works. The brain is where the, again, hardware activation. So right now we're making sense of reality and, and thoughts are coming in. And when they come in, they often come in the form of lies that tell you things about yourself and your future that just aren't true and attack you in the place of your identity. See, when I talk to men, I said, do you want to be great? Of course I want to be great. Why do you want to be great? Like, why? Like, why does everyone want to be great? Think about that. Because deep down, we know there's greatness within us. And we were never meant to be average. We were created by a creator to want to do great things, to be great. Because deep down, we were created with that DNA within us, spiritual DNA to do great things. We just have these voices that say, you're not great. You're not enough. You're not going to make it. You're not going to be successful. And that's what I had to battle for years. And for years, I lost the battle in my mind. That's how I know it so well. Lost the battle. 
But once you understand how the battle is being waged, and I'm not choosing the initial negative thoughts, you realize I don't have to believe the lies. I got to speak truth to the lies. I got to speak words of encouragement. And this is what the garden is all about. It's also what my next book is all about. The same message I shared all throughout training camps this August and never had a bigger response from, from professional college athletes than I had this summer talk, wanting to talk about this. Because I go right to the heart of what's really happening to men, to people in general, like we're talking about right now. So once you understand how the battle is being waged, five Ds, doubt, distortion, lies, negative thoughts, discouragement. We don't give up because it's hard. We give up because we get discouraged. Again, we get defeated. We get discouraged. We get down. It's not working out. My plan's not happening. I'm not living the life I, I want to live. I'm not realizing my potential. I'm falling short. I'm not enough. All that discouragement. Distractions, fourth D. Distractions of the enemy of greatness. Media, social media. Porn is a distraction. All sorts of distractions that keep you from what matters most and keep you from being your best. And then finally, divide or division. And the word anxious literally means divided at its Greek root word. Anxious means divided. Think about that. So negative thoughts divide you. They separate you. They weaken you. And what I say, there's an evil that wants to divide you and separate you and keep you from your destiny. Isn't that weird that anxious means divided? Do you think I just made this up myself? No, this is how it all works. And so the negative thoughts divide you and separate you and attack you in the place of your identity. And too often men then give up where they take a lesser role and they don't rise up to be who they are called and meant to be. And that's why they get defeated and they lose the battle. And that's the whole goal of evil to make people and men, women as well, but men, we're talking about men here, lose the battle of your mind. And then you lose the battle of your heart and your soul. And I see too many men being defeated. And my goal is to help men and women win the battle and come from a place of victory. And the key is you got to understand that you're not fighting from a place for victory. You're fighting from a place from victory. And what does that mean? When you have faith, when you trust, when you understand how all this works, you realize the battle's already been won. And your job is just to know that you have you have already won the battle. So come from that place of strength and unity and power, knowing that the battle's already been won. But your role is to win the battle each day from a battle that's already been won because it's an ongoing battle of, in this reality that we're living. The spiritual level, I'm talking about the battle's already been won. At this level, it seems like it's playing out every single day. And so instead of doubt, you trust. Instead of distortion, you speak truth to the lies. And here's the best advice I ever heard, Gavin. Dr. James Gills, only person on the planet to complete six double Ironman triathlons. That's a double Ironman, which means you do an Ironman, a day later do another one. And the last time he did it, he was 59 years old. He was asked how he did it. He said, I've learned to talk to myself instead of listen to myself. If I listen, I roll the fear, the negativity, the doubt, all the reasons why I can't finish this race. But if I talk to myself, I can feed myself with the words and the encouragement that I need to keep on moving forward. That's the key. Talk to yourself. Don't listen. Encourage yourself. So instead of the discouragement setting in, encourage. And the word encourage means to put courage into. So when you encourage someone, you put encourage into them. And when you encourage yourself by talking to yourself, you're encouraging yourself and you put encourage into yourself. It's essential. Instead of distractions, you focus on what matters most. Getting better every day. Being who you're meant to be. Building your business. Living your mission and vision. Building great relationships. With your, with your spouse, whatever it may be, or your, or your girlfriend, or whatever it may be, you develop great relationships. Focus on what matters most. And then instead of that division, you unite. What do you mean by unite? Unite back to self, unite with others, connection, right? Men are better together. We don't want to be in isolation. Find your group, find your tribe. This podcast is a great resource. We get together so you are stronger together, supporting each other. We often think of resilience. I just spent time with the top researcher in resilience, Karen Rybich. She's at the University of Pennsylvania. And she was saying, we often think of resilience as like this individual persona of grit, cowboy, Western, single, one person. Resilience actually is strongest when we are supported by a group and we have loving relationships that then make us more resilient. And so that's essential. Unite to others. And then to unite spiritually with the God that created you. Again, I said that there's, there's evil trying to divide you. Well, there's good 
and there's a God that's always trying to unite you back to oneness, back to relationship, back to creation, and back to what was was initially created and and meant to have happened. And so you've got this oneness, and then you got the separateness, and you got evil trying to divide, you got good always trying to unite. And life is about that journey. That's that's the key as men. Will we come from the place of unity, power, strength, and oneness, or a place of division and weakness? And this is how we win the battle. Make sense? Love that, John. Thank you so much. The long dia try, but hopefully it makes sense. Yes, I hope everyone's taking notes there. Yeah, that's some real value there. And yeah, brilliant insights to be implemented. And uh, yeah, I'm looking here at uh, the bookshelf behind you. I see many of your best-selling books. Is there a, a personal favorite there for yourself? And if so, yeah, it's, why? It's training camp. Training, training camp is my favorite. People say, well, people say Carpenter is my best book. It's about being a craftsman instead of a carpenter, like showing up every day and being a craftsman, like love, serve, care, build greatness, create a work of art, like have grit. Uh, craftsman is all about getting better every single day. And doing the little things with with great doses of love and care and passion and purpose and soul, a craftsman, you know, while while carpenters show up and just try to build something, a craftsman is there to try to create a masterpiece. So that's probably my my best book, Energy Bus, by far the most popular, sold several million copies now. So you know, from 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 idea to writing it to all those rejections to finally getting it in bookstores to now selling, I think, 3 million copies worldwide. It's been an amazing journey. That book has changed my life. So really thankful I wrote it. And a lot of people really benefit from that because that's all about positivity and dealing with the negativity. And the energy vampires in the world that want to sabotage you, that want to suck the life right out of you. And Gandhi said, I will not let anyone walk through my mind with their dirty feet. So it's about being more positive than the negativity you face. And then training camp, though, is my favorite. So training camp is my favorite. Again, why? Even though it's a story about excellence, it's about overcoming our fear, finding our faith to be all that we're meant to be. And that is the ultimate journey. Can I overcome the fear that divides, the fear and the negativity that separates and divides? Because fear is the ultimate liar. Fear is the ultimate weapon that evil uses to keep you from your destiny, your purpose. Fear, right? It's discouragement, but at the heart of all of it is this fear that discourages me, that makes me want to give up, that holds me back, that paralyzes me, that keeps me truly from, from fighting the battle because I'm fearful. So, so you have to overcome the fear with faith, with hope and love, faith, hope, and love. And that's training camp. The main character has to find his faith on his journey, become who he's meant to be. And you see his journey and it's just, people have cried. And so many people have read it, have been professional athletes that said it was life-changing. And one of those is Damian Lillard, one of the top NBA players, you know, in the league and rookie of the year, read this book twice before his rookie season to remind himself how hard he would have to work to make it in the NBA. And what's cool now is, is Damian has clinics now and he gives the book away to his clinics, to all, I mean, all the players in his clinics, young men paying it back. So it carries on. It was written in 2009, I believe, came out in 2009 to 2010 and yet still to this day, you know, is able to speak to people right here, right now, where they are. And what's inspired you to write the, the new book? The newest one that I'm writing now? Yeah. It's this teaching of, of, of understanding the battle we're facing. So what I wrote in the garden, but taking it to the next level and helping people understand that state of mind and your mindset ultimately determines the life that you live. And it's not the circumstances that happen to you. It's not the events. It's our state of mind. And when your state of mind is low, the circumstance happens and it bothers you. When your state of mind is high, same circumstance happens and it doesn't. One day you're in traffic and it bothers you. The next day you're in the same traffic and it doesn't. One day you're at work and your boss says something that really riles you up. The next day he says something, you're in a good mood and you just blow it off. You know, my friend just tried to rile me up this morning. And there are times he, he tries to rile me up and I get riled up because he knows how to push my buttons. And this morning I responded because I was in a high state of mind. I said, you trying to rile me up this morning? He said, yes. 
you're not working today. So I was in a high state of mind. So again, it's always our state of mind and it's never the circumstance. So it's a book about teaching about how to win the battle of our mind, but also ultimately how to move from clutter to clarity, how to move from fear and discouragement and doubt to courage and calm and confidence. I look forward to reading that, John. Are there, are there some principles and practices that you would recommend to guys out there right now who know they can do more, become more, and they might be feeling a little bit lost or bewildered at this point? Sure. Um, I would definitely start with a practice that feeds yourself every day with positivity and optimism and belief to elevate your state of mind. Because the negativity is trying to really cause your, your state of mind to go lower and lower and lower. So how do I elevate it, right? Instead of letting the state of mind go down, how do I bring it up? And so for me, gratitude is a big practice I do on a daily basis. I take a walk of gratitude in the morning. And while I'm walking, I just say what I'm thankful for. Because the research shows you can't be stressed and thankful at the same time. So that gratitude is, is really key. So that changed my life. Years ago, my wife almost left me. I started doing that. Now, I'm not saying everyone should do this. You got to do what works for you. I give ideas, but you got to practice them on your own and find out what works for you best. The other practice is on the left side of a piece of paper, you write down your negative thoughts. What are your patterns? We all have ours. What are yours? On the right side, you write down the words of encouragement and the truth you will speak to those lies. And I'm telling you, anytime the negative thoughts come in, you replace it and you start saying those positive thoughts. Take every thought captive. Say the positive words. Say those positive thoughts. Start winning the battle of the mind by doing that on a daily basis. It will be weird first. It will be weird. But just think about how weird those negative thoughts are that they just came in and you didn't ask them to. That's weird. So how can we then counter them with positive words of encouragement? That is essential. So I think that's a really healthy practice to engage in, you know, as, as someone who wants to be more positive. Like that's one of my key strategies to talk to yourself on a daily basis. And what I would do is when I was in my peak of my misery and negativity, and I just put this on my Instagram the other day, I put a video on it. I would, I would walk each day and I would say these words, I expect great things to happen today. I would say, I trust in your plan for my life, God. I accept all the joy, abundance, love, and success in my life. See, I said, I accept, I receive, I accept. So now I'm being a conduit. I'm open to it. I'm allowing it. Like flow through me. I'm open. I'm an energetic being in the universe. I'm going to die one day. I'm, when I die, my body turns to dust. So what truly am I? Right? I'm energy. So I'm going to be open to, the, to, to this spirit and energy that wants to move through me in a powerful way. So that was a key part of it. Just saying those every day. And then I would say, I accept all of the people who want to work with me and benefit from my gifts and talents. And every day I'm getting stronger, healthier, and better. I would say that every day while I was walking, people thought I was crazy, but I would say it. And guess what? My mindset started to change. My beliefs started to change day in and day out. After a week, it wasn't so weird. After a month, it started to feel normal. After a year, I started to see impact. Here we are almost it's probably 18, 19 years later, I'm living my dreams. So guess what? I truly believe it works. So start saying the words that you want to say. Start creating in your mind the life that you want to have. Start speaking it into existence. Start speaking life. When the negativity comes in, no, I'm not believing that lie. I'm going to say the truth and then do the work. Another tip is to zoom focus every day. Zoom focus. You have the big picture vision of what you want to create, but zoom focus. I call it telescope microscope. Telescope's big picture vision, microscope, zoom focus action. What actions will you take today to realize the picture in the telescope? Identify three things you're going to do today. Every day you wake up, what three things am I doing today to be successful? We can always do three things. More than that might be tough. Pick your three core things and do those things. And the goal is to win every day. I was talking to a, a former Navy SEAL named Chad Wright. Had him on my podcast, Positive You. And he said, John, a lot of guys trying to be a Navy SEAL don't make it to become one. They don't make it because they don't make it through Hell Week. He said, they don't make it through Hell Week because they're dreaming for it to end. They're, they're longing for it to be over. 
He said, the ones who make it just want to make it to breakfast. And I realized that was the key to getting through any challenging time. It was to not worry about tomorrow, win today. And that's what we're talking about here. Win today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Win today. Win the next day. Win the day after that. And if you win each day, you're going to win the month. You're going to win the year. You're going to win your future. But you have to identify what winning today means to you. So for me, it meant I'm going to stay positive, get better, and I'm going to encourage people. That was like my general ways to win each day. But then each day I'm Zoom focusing on the specific things I know I need to do today to be successful. When I write a book, I got to write every December. And I got to sit down and I got to start right away when I get up. I can't get on email, social media. The minute I do, I can't write. So I've got to tune all that out and write first. Do first things first. And then once you start doing it and then you write and you get a couple of pages, four or five pages, I go take a walk. And then I go take a walk. I get more ideas. I come back, I write some more, and then I'm done. Done for the day. Then I get my phone out. Then I get everything out. And I can do whatever I want. At night before I go to bed, I have to read what I wrote. So it stays fresh. And then I edit it. I write some new ideas. I'll write some notes down. Oh, tomorrow, start writing on this. Add this. Do this. You know, tell this story. And then I, I start the process again the next day. Within a few weeks, three, four weeks, I have a book written. And that's by being disciplined by doing it every day. You've got to decide what is it you want to create? What is it you want to build? And you got to do it every day while you're tuning out all the negative voices telling you not to do it. That's the key. Well, I don't know about the listeners, but I'm feeling super psyched after hearing all that, John. So thank you so much for your time, energy, inspiration, and incredible insights and the work you do, man. So for all of the guys listening to the podcast here where is the best place to find you at and to reach out get in touch or hopefully grab one of your books or a few of them what's the radish Web, websites johngordon.com j-o-n gordon.com if you go there you'll see my seven step plan for positivity it's a seven step positive you plan just download it's free start with that I'm not asking you to buy a book. Start with that plan, do the plan, and you'll start to see impact. So that's my hope. Go to johngordon.com, put in your email, you'll get the plan. It will allow us to stay in touch. I write a weekly positive tip. So I encourage people every, you know, every week with this positive tip. I also have Instagram and Twitter. So I'm always posting encouragement, ideas, strategies on Instagram and Twitter. John Gordon 11, J-O-N. Gordon 11 is my Instagram and Twitter. And then also I'm on LinkedIn as well. If people want to find me there from, from a business standpoint, I give a lot of talks on culture, leadership, teamwork. That's, you know, my main core of what I do, but ultimately I also am here to ins inspire and empower people individually with the right mindset. Cause you can't be a positive leader. If you don't have the right positive mindset, can't be a great team member. If you don't have the right mindset, mindset begins the process of, of everything. And, and that's what I'm really big on. Oh, and one final thing. I have a daily positive uh, website, dailypositive.com, daily positive. And you can sign up for our daily quotes. So every day we send a new positive quote to keep you encouraged. So, you know, really the whole goal is to encourage people, inspire people and, and make a difference. And I love doing it. That's my mission. I'll do it to the day I die. Trust me, I'm not doing it for the money. I made more than I ever thought I would ever make selling all these books, thank God, and giving all these talks over the years. And I'm very thankful. I give a lot of way to charity as well, a lot of way to my church, a lot of way to charities. But at the same time, I continue to do it because it's really about one person at a time. I know ultimately, you know, we're all going to die, right? We're all going to die. My, both my parents are gone. I lost my parents. So what matters most? What matters most? right? A life touches a life that touches a life, impacting someone's life and making a difference so that they're better men, in this case, for their children, you know, for their girlfriends, for their future wives, for their wives, and so that they can be all that they're meant to be. And ultimately, that's what it's all about. So my hope is you listen to this and you decide today to say, I'm going to be all that I meant, I'm meant to be. And I'm going to face obstacles. I'm going to face struggles, but I'm going to have the grit each day to win today and win the next day. I'm going to win the battle of my mind. And then I'm going to win the battle for the hearts and the minds of those I love most. Because guess what? It is a battle. There's evil that wants to try to bring you down. But good truly, truly wins in the end. And good is always looking for good men who are going to fight the battle. And that's what we must do. So God bless you guys. And thanks for listening. 
And Gavin, thanks for having me on. This was one of my favorite podcasts. For some reason, the spirit was flowing. And I wasn't planning on saying these things, but I really believe that obviously there were men that were meant to hear it. And I, I hope it resonated. If it does, and you hear this, please reach out to me. Let me know you heard this and you heard me on with Gavin and let me know how this impacted you because I do love hearing from people. It does encourage me. So we all need encouragement and I need it as well. Thank you so much, guys. Brilliant. Thank you, John. Let's get after it, man.